So today we're going to be doing the fastest Nextcloud install with Stacks. And it actually is the easiest install as far as I'm concerned. And a special thank you to all my patrons, including my news patron, Willie Woolridge. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. Thank you. So welcome to Technodad Life, and I'm Jeff. And so today what we're going to be doing is installing Nextcloud with Let's Encrypt so that uh, using a stack. And so a stack is on Portainer here. I'll just show you that first. So if we look over here on the left, we can see it says Stacks. Then click Add Stack. We come up to this page where it says web editor. So basically what we can do here is add in different uh, containers so they all work together in one little network. And so it's a little feature that actually makes Docker, it's, well, it's basically like Docker Compose in a GUI. Today what we're gonna be doing is installing Nextcloud with a stub domain and reverse proxy and we're going to be using these directions from Linux Server I.O. Uh, we just have to modify them just very slightly because this is over a year old, so it works better for us. So we're going to scroll down under Nextcloud subdomain and then copy this whole Docker Compose file. And then we're going to paste that into a WordPad document. So here you can see I've pasted it into WordPad and the red areas are the things that we're going to change. And so what I'll do now is just explain things as we go down through them. The first file that we're going to work on is Nextcloud. If you go down a little farther, then we have Maria Database. And down below this, then down below this is Next Encrypt. So if we look under Nextcloud, we can see it's going to pull the Linux server Nextcloud container. The container name is going to be Nextcloud. And then the areas in red are the things that we need to change. On Open Media Vault, generally the user is, the PUID is 1000 and the GID is 100. So we change that to 100. We put in our time zone. Under volumes, we have to put in the absolute path. And so how we find that, so how we find that is we need to go back to Open Media Vault and look in the GUI. So there's two ways of finding your absolute path. The first is you click on shared folders. Next to relative path, a down arrow will come up. Press on that, press columns, absolute path. And then you can click on that and then right click it and then inspect. And over to the side here, we'll, we can double click on the absolute path, copy that. Then we can paste it in our Docker file. I find that a little sketchy, so what I've done is, if I go to OMV Extras, click on Docker, you can see I put the absolute path in my Docker storage, which is probably a better long-term solution, especially if you're using something like the Raspberry Pi, because if you add and delete a lot of Dockers like I do, then that's going to fill up your SD card. And so I'll leave a link up here on how to do that. So then we can paste that in. So there's the app data, and then we're going to add in Nextcloud. Then just copy that, paste that here, and then put slash data. Those four things are the only thing that we need to change for Nextcloud. So let's go to the next section. So now if we go to the Maria database section, you can see, again, we need to change the PG ID, need to change the time zone, and then we need to add in the app data folder. So that section, we only needed to change three things. So now let's go down to Let's Encrypt. So we scroll down. You can see here we're in the Let's Encrypt section. Again, we need to change the PGID and the time zone. But what is this new thing here? So now we need to go to DuckDNS and we need to get a URL and a token that we can then place in here. So go to duckdns.org, log in, then make a URL and you'll get a token. Uh, if you want to see how to do that, I'll leave a link up here in the corner. And then paste in our URL and our token. 
And then again, we want to we put, want to put in the absolute path to our app data folder. And then down below here, uh, I added, I changed 80 to 82. And this is because Open Media Vault is on 80, so I didn't want it interfering uh, with the Docker. One extra thing that we can do below the token area there, hit return and then put in dash space email equals. And then after the equal sign, then put in your own email address. So once you've done all that, then you can simply copy this, paste this under web editor, go up to the top and name your stack. So one thing you need to do before you actually hit the generate button is to scroll through your stack and make sure there's no errors. And so if I scroll through mine, I don't see any errors. And this is what an error would look like. So if I take a couple of spaces out here, so you can see over the left hand side that there is a red circle. And most of the time it is just spacing that is the problem. Once you've corrected the spacing, then the red error goes away. So once you've fixed everything, then scroll down to the bottom of the page and then click on this button that says deploy the stack. Now this will take a little bit of time because it's downloading more than one image. So it's time for a cup of coffee. Once that's done, it will show the next cloud stack. And if we click on containers, we can see there are our containers. Next, we'll click on the Let's Encrypt log, which looks like a piece of paper. Now, if you look in this log while it's generating, so it takes a little while to generate, uh, you'll see some information. So let's take a look at something here. So if we look right there, it says new certificate is generated and the server, and the server is ready. So now what we're going to do is type our URL, so our DuckDNS URL, plus we're going to put www at the beginning of it. So for me, it was https colon slash slash www.testtdl.duckdns.org and then hit enter. And it didn't work. That's because we have a few extra steps to do still. So if we go down to File Explorer, Go to our server and we can see we have our three folders. Click on App Data and there's our Let's Encrypt. Double click on that. Then we're going to go to NG, Nginx. Double click on that. Proxy Configs. And we're going to scroll down to Next Cloud. We're going to click on Next Cloud Subdomain .config .sample. Right click and open up Net pad plus plus. Now all we're going to do here is then click on file and then click on save as and we're going to remove the dot sample and then click save. And then we refresh this folder and now you can see there is a Nextcloud subdomain and the config is over here. Why I did this is I found just simply renaming the folder in Windows sometimes caused errors. This way there's just no errors. Okay, we're going to go up a folder and then we're going to click on site configs and then right click edit with notepad plus plus. We're going to scroll down to where it says location right here and we're just going to edit that out. Once we're done with that we can save that and then close this. Close that. We're going to go back to Portainer. Click on Let's Encrypt. Then go to Restart. So then now our Let's Encrypt is using the new data that we just put in for Nextcloud. So now if we type in HTTPS slash slash nextcloud.testdl .duckdns.org, which, which was my address. You should type in your own. And then hit enter. We're at the next cloud login page. Then type in a user and a password. Then click on storage and databases. Click on MySQL Maria database. Type in root. 
And the password is what we put in our Docker container. So if we go back to our WordPad, we can see the MySQL root password. For me, for me it was MariaDB password. So we'll type that in here. Database name is Nextcloud. And then Maria Database. And for some reason, it doesn't actually do that. You have to take out the local host. Good. So roots, your password in your Docker container, Nextcloud, Maria Database. Go down to the bottom, click Finish Setup. And this will take a few minutes again, so time for another cup of coffee. And here you can see that Collabora Online uh, failed. And this is a problem with the Docker right now, so basically it does not work in the Docker at this moment. So you either have to add in a separate container with only Office or Collabora for this to, to actually edit Word documents on Nextcloud right now. Once that's done, you'll come to this blue page, which again doesn't work in this Docker, but then the rest do. Just click through these. And here you can see Nextcloud is working. And so that is the fastest way to install Nextcloud at this time. Hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe and check out my merch. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.